What is going on fellow vendors? Extreme Vending here. Today we're going to go over a vending tier list that I have come up with. This is my personal opinion, but before we get started to this video, let's talk about the giveaway that's going on. It's only about a month away. CanyonMachines.com is giving away a super mini. It's so easy to sign up for. The link is in the description. Just click on that and you can start signing up. There are a couple requirements. We ask you to support the Galaxy Games 843 channel. We ask you to support the Howard Hospitality Group. We ask you to support myself and to join the Discord and of course fill out the short one minute form that gets you entered into the giveaway and you comment in our videos and I'll give you additional chances of being selected in this giveaway. Also we have Quick Play involved in this giveaway as well. Give them some love and support because they will also be at the convention with the giveaway when it's live and helping us select the winner. Alright, let's get started with the tier list that I have here. S rank is obviously meant for the superior ranking, the best of the best in my opinion, and the C rank is the lowest in my opinion on the quality of the type of vending machine you got here. And then I do have a bonus rank, which we'll start off with that, and that's the Not Forgotten, it's kind of like the honorable mentions, because these machines I think are actually not well, like highly sought for, but they do make some money, and I think they're just forgotten in the sense that like, if you were to get these at working in good locations, you can still make some money. And the first one, I actually have this machine. It's a sports arena. I do have it in location. Now, it, we were talking about this in the live stream with Galaxy Games 843 and the Howard Hospitality Group. You can actually put Pokemon cards packs in here and make that a possible prize. And the way the sports arena works is you have a light that circles around the, the light, circles around the machine. And if you stop it with the skill stop button and you stop it on a red bulb that's right next to the prize, you win that prize. And this machine actually does have a setting where you can rig it, where you can have it where it's win every time. You can make it where it's truly skilled or you can set it up where it's like one in five, one in four, one in six, something like that. So you can put some valuable prizes in there. This machine typically goes for in auctions as cheap as $25. But one with a bill acceptor can go up to $200, but it's a very cheap machine. Uh, and if you can get some good prizes in there, it might make a good return. However, the next one is one of my personal favorites. And I have memories of this one because the first time I saw a lighthouse uh, vending machine, prize redemption machine, was in a, a, on a vacation. I actually won a Game Boy Advance with this. So I fell in love with the lighthouse. I won a Game Boy Advance and I took that home and you know bought some Game Boy Advance games and got to enjoy that. Anyhow, the lighthouse is made by the same developers, made by the same manufacturers as the stackers. So it's made by LAI. And I absolutely love this machine. What's different about this machine is you're trying to light up a lighthouse. You have to score six levels of lights. And it, 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 it tricks you because you get three, you typically three tries per credit. And it goes up and down. And it just like, and when you leave, when you are finished with your credit, there's a chance where it'll be like on the fourth or fifth level. And so you're just one level or two levels away from winning that prize. And so you want to put another dollar in there to see how high you can go. And it always seems the most likely to leave you really close to winning that prize. But in the end, you never win it until it's ready to pay out. You can set the payout limit to whatever amount you want. And then it becomes kind of a just a luck and skill. But uh, there's only one tier prize. So it's unlike the uh, stackers where you have a minor prize and a superior prize. You only have one prize level, so you want to keep your product if at the same uh, dollar amount as all the others. The lighthouse can be won also for similar for about $50 in auctions I've seen them go for, and with bill acceptor as much as $200. So look for those kind of auctions. So in rank C, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do this. And if you do this type of ending, uh, you know, you guys obviously are got something good if, and I'm not saying to change your mindset or anything. I don't want to make anyone upset. Rank C is just the lower end of vending in my opinion. And I'll tell you the pros and cons in my opinion. I, and to be honest, I haven't participated in all these types of vending. Obviously you, you guys know me as the mini claw machines. So please don't be offended by my ranking, but there are going to be some rank C's and maybe some of you will be upset because maybe that's how you started. And to be honest, some of this stuff, like the rank C, which I'm going to start off with, is the honor boxes. 
I actually done honor boxes, so I have a little bit of experience with honor boxes, and my experience was very, very negative with the honor boxes. However, it doesn't mean it doesn't work for people and it can't be a good experience for you. But that's where I'm going to put the honor boxes. But I want to talk about what's good about the honor boxes first uh, before I talk about the, what's negative. And the good thing about the honor boxes are is that it's such a cheap way to get started in vending. I mean, there's nothing cheaper than the honor boxes. You can get honor boxes for as cheap as $10, $15 used, maybe $20 new if you want new honor boxes. Um, you do have to buy to get the $20 price, probably a bulk amount, maybe 20, 30 different honor boxes. Um, but they are what I think the most important thing about the honor boxes is they're so easy to place and get locations for. So you can just go around to every single neighborhood mom and pop shop and be able to place this. And even the impossible corporations will say yes to honor boxes. Not all of them, but quite a few honor boxes can be posted, uh, placed in corporations and uh, franchises that are nearly next to impossible to get. So you can get your foot into the door of these operations and get to know the owners and then you can actually upgrade to something in the future on the higher tier list and I think honor boxes are good in that sense. Now the bad thing about the honor boxes is uh, the honor boxes, especially with inflation hitting it, you have to ask for 50 cents now per vend. It used to be 25 cents, but now it's 50 cents. And a lot of people don't pay attention to the pricing or they don't care. And a lot of people just grab a, a sucker or candy out of there anyways. So you're not always gonna get the most honest people. And also, so to fill up an honor box, it usually costs you what, about five to $10 to fill it up, depending on how many treats you put in there. You're not always guaranteed that you're going to make that much in that month's time. Some people just look at honor boxes in general. A lot of people have negative feelings toward honor boxes because they know that not all the money goes to charity. Uh, you do raise, and that's a pro, you do raise money for charity, but usually it's only like a dollar. So by the time you sell out of all the bo all the candy, a lot of people know that if your box raised $30, you, you only give a dollar to the charity and whether they view it as good or bad i mean whether you're doing it for good or bad people see that as a negative thing the other thing is theft honor boxes get stolen the competition everyone does honor boxes to get started and you can be good in a location be the first one in there and next week come in there and there's two other honor boxes there and the other thing with that is the competition is some of the competition is really uh, dirty they'll take your honor boxes away so that they're the only ones there or they will actually take your candy and stick it in their boxes and just do some cheap dirty moves like that to really to, to make you feel like you, you're no, no longer want that location and whatnot the other thing is honor boxes are thought as a quick vending in my opinion that is partially true but also partially false it's not as quick as you think because each honor box takes about three to five minutes to stack and so think about this you have 20 locations, you're going to want to have 40 honor boxes or maybe at least 30 because you want to have some on the hand ready to go because when you're doing your route and you're doing your collection, you want to walk in there, replace it, pull out the other one. So you don't, you don't want to pull out that money there on the spot. You don't want to restock it there on the spot. You want to go in and out. So you're going to have to have extra machines or extra boxes ready to go and you want to have them prepared before you leave. So when you're preparing these things in your car or, or at home, each box takes about three to five minutes to do because there's so many suckers, so many things you have to put in and you even want to make it look nice. You don't want to make it sloppy. So think about this. If you're doing five or uh, excuse me, 10 boxes for, for backup for your route and maybe you do half your route this time, half your route that time, it's actually about an hour to prepare those 10 boxes. So it's not as fast as you think. And then also when you're traveling, Traveling is, for me, when I'm doing my, my claw machines, I spend more time traveling than I do actually at the locations. And so think about that. You have 10 locations now, and you're going to have to travel to all those locations just to do half your route, to go in and out, flip a box, and then you can pull out the money when you're in your car or you're away from people. I actually don't even touch the money until I'm out of the way when I was doing honor boxes because it looks really you know, you look greedy, you look like you're not really giving to charity, which you are doing a charity, but people won't always understand. So that's why I think honor boxes are on the lower end. They're cheap to get started, yes, uh, but they take a lot longer than people think to prepare for them. And they also, 
uh, the, the theft rate and you're talking about a lot of time and travel and maybe if you're lucky you make $30 a box that would be really cool each month which would be a nice income and but uh, most likely you're only going to get $15, $20 a box after your product costs. You're, you're, you are making double to triple your money, but that was a whole month and that was a lot of traveling, a lot of work for that. So Honor Boxes Rank C. And to continue with Rank C, I'm going to do Honor Boxes 2.0, which is the better Honor Box, but they're more pricier. Now these Honor Boxes, uh, they're, they're, more, they're acrylic, they're harder, they're sturdier, they're less likely to break. Uh, you do want to have backups and switch out. These ones are faster to fill because you just dump candy in there. But then there's also more of a theft thing where people just reach in there and grab hands fulls for whatever. And it, it, it's just, it's more expensive. I would personally would go with the Honor Boxes. But uh, if you had the extra money and you wanted to build this route, these acrylic ones are more stable, more, more likely not to be stolen and higher quality. And the other thing is employees don't really look out for the honor boxes as much, but with the acrylic honor boxes, I would say employees and stores are more of aware because it stands out a little bit more, more sturdier and they'll recognize if someone's doing uh, some like trying to steal your boxes or whatnot. So I, I think they're a little bit more safe is what I'm trying to say. So those are my takes on the honor boxes. Similar, uh, uh, the acrylic ones similar to the regular one, just a little bit faster because you just dump the candy versus just st stacking them and such. So that's the honor boxes. So next up, I want to talk about bulk vending here. Oh, we're going on this bulk vending. This is going to be a touchy one because I think a lot of people uh, use bulk vending. And I haven't had any experience with bulk vending. So take that with a grain of salt with what I'm going to say. But this is my personal thoughts of bulk vending. Uh, I do not necessarily want to do bulk vending personally uh, because I'm I'm into the claw machines and I love the claw machines. I love the art, art return investments. You can get the mini claw machines cheaper than the bulk vending and make a lot more money. But bulk vending has something that the claw machines don't have the advantage of. And that's not neat. The bulk vending doesn't necessarily need to be plugged in unless you have something digital. But uh, most likely you don't need to plug in. But what's negative about that since there's no digital is as we've seen inflation happen, you're gonna to have to change out your mechs as inflation increases. And a lot of people have been changing out their, their coin mechs to uh, meet the demand on inflation. But there's a lot of pros and cons. The pros are they are, once you get the location secured, which is pretty easy in my opinion to get a location with bulk vending, because uh, if people like the extra money, it just goes in the back corner. They don't have to, the owners don't have to do anything. Uh, so you, you place it, you don't need electrical, you can place it almost anywhere in the store and it can make money and it gets your foot in the door with kind of like with the honor box, it gets your foot in the door with a location. So that's the good thing about bulk vending. The bad thing is, on the other good thing, sorry, I should mention is that it's very passive. You can let it sit there for two months, three months sometimes, and then you go over there and you collect 300, $400 and you pay up your percent to the owner. But that's also the bad thing is you let it sit for so long, the owners don't see you. And if you're not very transparent with the owners, even if you're not being dishonest, a lot of times I've heard negative things about bulk vending in the sense that the owners are like, I don't trust my, the, my vendor. They're not being honest. They're not paying my their fair share. Not realizing that the vendor is actually paying their fair share. So it's something to be aware of. You, you won't see the owner as much and most likely the owner won't trust you. I mean, it can be the owner won't trust you as much. The other thing is uh, it's a lot more expensive to get into bulk vending than it is to the other types of vending that I think are highly more profitable. I mean, to get a good rack can cost you thousand plus dollars. Although if you do use the auction and get go to the used market, you can get some for a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, because a lot of these vendors are getting rid of their old equipment and I think they're getting tired of bulk vending themselves. You'll have to buy that, probably rekey the machines and upgrade the mechs to make it profitable. Um, but it's very, very possible and it's a good way to get started. It's, it's just you need also, you need something to haul these machines around in. And I don't think it's very, you, you could use an SUV probably with a hatchback, but uh, you most likely want a truck to move this around. So I'm gonna put this, in the rank B department because it's definitely way better than the honor boxes. Uh, but it, you also have to, you know, 
understand that it's not the best income, but it is a good income and a good solid passive income. So rank B. Next, I'm going to talk about the sticker machines. Now, I put I, I should have had another tier because I actually want to put this above rank B, but I'm going to put it in the rank B for now. And the reason why I want to put it above is the sticker machines you can put in your your SUV, your car, whatever, because it's just one solid machine. You can separate it and such. But the, the reason why I wish that I had a rank above that is because I've been watching Howard Hospitality Group's channel and Galaxy Games, and everyone's talking about the Pokemon cards with the Pokemon stickers. So, you know, actually, just because of that, we're going to put that in rank A because this, this return on investments, this machine's like $400 and, and, or $350, whatever, at candymachines.com. And the Pokemon cards seem like they've been making $100 uh, a month or more in a good solid location. A lot easier to maintain than bulk in my opinion there is some work involved putting the pokemon cards in the sleeves although i did have someone show me that you can get so many hundreds of pokemon cards pre-sleeved for like 60 bucks so uh, you can make it more easier that way but it's probably cheaper to, sl re to sleeve them yourself so i was going to put in b but because howard and galaxy games i am actually going to put that in the rank a category the lower rank a category um now let's go with the stackers machine the stacker machine and this i mean i don't have all the prize redemption machines and they're going to be between a and b in my opinion the stacker machine is a b for me just because my experience is that oh, i should really put it in an a we'll put stackers in a because it actually does make good money it's just not as popular as other prize redemption machines um but uh, yeah, it, it makes good money. So, but the problem with the the stackers is it's a, it is a bigger machine. It's going to require a truck to move around, and I'll put just put it in A. It can be a good passive income, but it's not the best prize redemption uh, income. There's definitely better ones, and that will be actually the key master, and that's an A plus. Now you can get a mini key master. Uh, I heard problems with some of the minis on Alibaba, so maybe stay away from Alibaba's mini key masters but mini key masters are really cool they're about the same size as a stacker so harder to move around but you make a lot more money and the key master is an a plus because everyone loves the key master for whatever reason that prize redemption game and that also goes with the barber cut the key master the prize cube those are the same category they're not as popular as the key master but the key master is number one you can put the barber cut whatever maybe an a minus but uh and the cube but the key master is definitely the best of the best when it comes to prize redemption games and the other one that i really love this one's a personal favorite i'm going to put this in a minus it's the road trip prize redemption machine this one's kind of like a stackers in the sense you have several tiers of prizes but this one actually has three tiers now i should put it in a minus because i don't know enough about it um but i've always wanted one of these road trip games and so it, it's it's kind of bulky. It's it's actually really bulky because you you have uh, such a big prize redemption area. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that in A minus because I just think that the road trip is a really fun game, very vi visual and very interactive game because you push that wheel several times in one play. So I do love that. Next is a soda machine. I'm gonna put the soda machine in B tier. Uh, because the soda machine alone, uh, you know, actually, we'll put the soda machine in A tier, A minus tier, because it's uh, it lasts a lot longer than the candy machine, a, a snack machine, excuse me. A snack machine, uh, you have to worry about uh, food product being expand, you know, going bad, expiring. But with a soda machine, you don't have to worry about that as much because soda lasts a lot longer, and you can probably go through the soda more often. And then the other problem with the snack machine is you, you have the coils. If an item falls out of the coil, I've talked about this before, then it, it falls out and then it, it, someone gets a free item and then no one wants to buy that item and vend it and you just wasted a week of, of whenever, how long it takes you to, before you check on it. You waste all that time where you could have checked on your machine and you find out no one vended that because there was an empty slot. So I'm going to put the snack machine at rank B. And then let's talk about the next level of snack and soda machine and this is actually way better and this makes it where it goes rank a plus is if you have a nyx reader on a soda machine that makes it where you can it becomes more passive it lets you know 
what you need to bring it, it to your soda machine. And I love that Galaxy Games has these Nyx readers so we can learn about that. So shout out to Galaxy Games 843. The soda machines with Nyx reader is so great because now you can come pre-kitted to your location and be able to set up and be in and out with your machine, collect your stack of money, have money come in your bank account all the time. And also, I'll put the snack and snack machine at a rank A- minus with Nyx Reader just because you still have the problem with the snacks expiring. But at least you know and you can better uh, equip yourself on the uh, pre-kits and know what's selling and not what not. And so you can kind of keep an idea of when things are expiring, makes expiring snacks that are expiring so you can have a better idea so that's a rank a minus um now the combo machine i'm going to put that at a minus and a plus because nyx reader makes it better and we already know that it's cool enough to have a smaller snack selection with soda machine i mean that's that's great so that's why it's a minus and a plus so uh let's see what next we're getting to the fun stuff the stuff that i like a lot more but let's get rid of the cotton candy machine. The cotton candy machine is a rank B. The reason why is that machine breaks down so often. It's a very good money making machine. If you have a good location, like a mall location, it'll make a lot of money. The problem is that machine breaks down all the time. Uh, the two candy, uh, cotton candy machines that I have seen in person, one at my local mall and one at the jump center, all the time, offline, offline, because they're always having to come over and fix it. So every so many vents, it breaks down. So just keep that in mind if you're getting into the cotton candy machine. It makes a lot of money, but it's real expensive, and you break down a lot. And that goes with the vending machines. They're also very expensive, but at least the vending machines do not break down at all. They're usually pretty sturdy, especially if you buy them brand new. Okay, so A+, plus, I'm going to put the original OG Mini. The original OG Mini, I love that one so much. That's how I started. It's an A plus because you can move it around in your car. You can move it around in an SUV, hatchback. Um, most vehicles can move this around. Unless it's a really compact small car like a smart car, you're not going to be able to move this around on. But you can move this machine around anywhere. The cost of the machine has gone down so much. You can pretty much get yourself a machine shipped to your door. You have to buy four of them now for about $650 a piece. You can buy one in the States from KrabbyClaw.com, which is a little bit more. I think it's like $9.50 a piece, but you get one right away. They are Nyx ready. They have a bill acceptor. They can hold a decent amount of plush and make the return on investments within a, a, as little as a month I've had to make the return on investment. I had locations, and I would have to check on it, and that's the downside of these minis. I'll have to check on them once a week if they're selling a lot, like $300 or more. I have to check on my machine, even $250. It will outsell and it uh, it'll sell all its product out. So I've had locations where it will sell two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars in a week's time, and it made its money back in two weeks even. So fast return on investment. And if you think about it, the return on investment is so great. It's so much better than almost everything else on the list. And that's why I put that one at A plus tier. Is it's just such a great machine. Another A plus is the full size claw machine. Full size claw machine, it's you get bigger plush in there, nicer stuff. Even though you can get them cheaper on Alibaba, most like most likely you're going to buy that in the states. There are CanyonMachine.com and there's also AZ Amusements that we use. I bought in some bigger claw machine from AZ Amusement. He took really good care of me. Uh, Grant is amazing. Kevin's also amazing from CanyonMachines.com. So yeah, I put that in A plus because the return on investment on claw machines are just so great. They're a lot more passive. You put the toys in there, they don't expire. Um, if you follow the trends and put like Valentine's Day holiday toys in there, when it's Valentine's Day, you put the Valentine's Day toys. If a new anime comes out or a new cartoon movie like Puss in Boots just recently came out, you put that kind of plush in there, your sales are gonna skyrocket for that time period and make lots and lots of money. So an A plus tier uh, is full size claw machines. Now I haven't done any S's because I've been saving the best for last. Um, these next four are all S tier. We'll start off with the coin pusher. The, this is the worst of the S tier because it's very limited on what states can actually put this. I can't use coin pushers. But you, if you get a coin pusher with a, re, a hopper in there that collects the coins that fall down, 
and uh, have a bill acceptor. This thing's nearly self-sustainable. I've seen claw kickers have that kind of coin butcher. And basically, it has a change machine built into it. Any coins that's one for the, uh, the fall on the side, they slide into the hopper and refill itself. And so they put $20 bill in there. It pulls out 80 quarters. You got 80 quarters of play. They play it. Uh, you get 120 coins fall down on the sides. Now you just refill the hopper. So it's just constant, never-ending amount of it's totally passive the only time you have to check on that machine is obviously you want to probably refill the play field make it look nice again put some big bills on there or uh, pull out the money because eventually your stack of bills will be so thick it won't take any more bills so that's on the lower end of the s rank uh, just because you can't get them in most states uh, like i would say only eight states i think it's eight states you can have the coin pusher so check your local laws the next three are all tied. They're all amazing. The Super Mini, which is from CandyMachines.com, that which we're doing the giveaway on. Amazing. The great thing about the Super Mini, it has a good size prize locker that you can have on top of there. It holds a lot of plush. Um, it is the smallest between these next three width-wise, skinniest. So it is the skinniest uh, Mini of all, which is a good thing which is also, a, it could be a bad thing because you don't get as much width, but you know, depending on how you look at it, but it's an amazing, amazing machine. I think the weakest part of the Super Mini is that you only have, you have that computer chip pop out that you program it with. I don't like that as much as the other ones. I think the other ones are easier when you use the joystick and the button to set your settings, but that's a very minor thing to complain about. Next is the Golden House. The Golden House actually fits the most amount of plush out of all the top tier uh, mini claw machines but the only weak point of the golden house i would say which can be an easy fix and it's just like another nitpick is the prize locker uh it's good size but it is the smallest out of the three okay um so but this one fits about i would say about 15 more percent 20 more percent um than the super mini now there's the Mega Mini, and that's the one I usually use because uh, I buy them in bulk and I get them so so cheap. Those know that uh, you can get these Mega Minis for like seven hundred some odd dollars shipped to your door if you order so many. Uh, so it's definitely a very affordable and it comes with a bill acceptor. But the weak point of the Mega Mini is the amount of prizes it holds. It's just about the same amount as the Super Mini. The Super Mini beats it out just a little bit, but it's the same size as the Golden House width wise so you would expect it to hold a little bit more but the super mini and and the mega mini actually hold the same amount but the good strength is that the mega prize on top is actually the largest mega prize out of all three of them and that one can hold the biggest mega prize so that you can put a whole bunch of good stuff in that mega prize also the mega mini has a slightly larger claw than the other minis so you can fit the larger plush that you want, the premium, beautiful, larger plush, and also still be able to grab the small plush that the other minis can do. So that is actually probably the biggest advantage of the Mega Mini versus the other mini, uh, is just having that slightly larger claw. So that will conclude this video on the tier list. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any machines that you want me to mention that I did not mention in this tier list, or maybe I really made you upset about the honor boxes or the bulk vending let me know down below comment down below and who knows maybe i'll do an update on this list uh like i said i'm a bit biased on some items and some other things i had bad experiences on so maybe you guys had better experiences and i hope you did i really do but anyways if you haven't already done so make sure you smash that like button for me and click the subscribe button and comment down below your thoughts and chat with me in the discord and join me with Galaxy Games 843, Cosmic Vending, Power Plus Hospitality Group, Quick Play, and so many others like ET Vending and uh, just, just True Vending. There's so many different vendors in our Discord, guys. Join the Discord. It's a lot of fun. And I'll see you next time in the next video. Take care. Bye.